everyone, this is Miss Segovia. I'm going to walk you through how to do the virus foldable. And so um, this is what the end product is going to end up looking like. And so you're going to have the little pictures of the virus, the lytic cycle, and the lysogenic cycle with uh, the descriptions underneath the little flaps. So I know there's been some confusion on how to put this together, and uh, I just want to make sure you know and give you some little quick uh tips and tricks. So the first thing we're going to do is work with your uh, page itself. I want to do a little bit of coloring in here. Ideally I would print these all in color for you, but that gets really expensive. So we're going to color uh, two colors. One is blue and red. You can use whatever you want. I just like these personally. So we're going to go through here and we're going to color all the viral DNA red. So I even like to start up here in the diagram just to give it a little burst of color to make a, a red virus for us to work with. And then if we go down our little pictures here, you can see there's the DNA in our little viruses here popping out of a cell. So we'll go ahead and highlight them with a red color. And then um, going to where they infect, we got the little viral DNA here. And um, up on our little viruses here, all these are going to be red. Color those in real quick. And uh, let, let's just walk through here. Here, So we got our little um, viruses coming out of the cell. And uh, when those viruses escape, they go and infect other cells. And they actually will integrate themselves into the viral genome. So they can form their own little circle called a plasmid, or they can become part of the DNA itself. It's a really neat process. What that ends up doing is uh, kind of tricking the cell into making more viral DNA. And so in this picture, all our little curly DNA is our viral DNA and our little um, straight lines here are the pieces that are getting ready to assemble new viruses. So they take over and they start making new things. It's like uh, a chocolate factory being taken over by starbursts and now all they're going to make is starbursts. And so we go through and we'll highlight all our viral DNA in these pictures. Because what the virus does is it takes over, makes viral parts, assembles them, and then releases them into the world to have their havoc on all the other cells. Viruses can also go into what's called the lysogenic cycle, and so they'll integrate themselves into the genome. And so here, let's go ahead and highlight some viral DNA in our genome so we can show that it's being carried generation to generation. The other color that we're going to put on here is blue that's going to represent our DNA. And so this is the DNA that belongs to the bacteria, which is now clearly sad. It's blue. It's been infected by a virus. So here's our bacterial DNA. And here's showing where that viral DNA has merged in with the bacterial DNA. It even will go through many cycles and replicate as the bacterial DNA goes through and does its replications to make more bacteria, it can just kind of lay low. Um, cold sores are a really good example of a viral infection that stays in what's called the lysogenic cycle again, and it'll just replicate within your cells before being released and forming the actual cold sore that you see. Sad news, guys, is once you have a cold sore, that viral DNA will stay in those cells forever. And it's when um, something triggers it, especially stress levels, the cold sore will come out, and that's when your virus is active. So up in these pictures here, we can show some of our um, other bacterial parts coming out there, uh, the, the DNA that's being used in the cell. And so uh, this kind of gives us a nice little coloring and a, a little bit more interest to our diagram. The next thing you're going to do is cut open your flaps. Now the very first flap here has the little dotted lines. And so what I like to do is take something a little bit thicker. Uh, here's some note cards or you can fold up a piece of paper and set it behind. And then um, take a sharp uh, scissors edge, uh, exacto knife, or uh, my personal favorite is just a small razor blade. Remember, safe side, owie side. And just very carefully go trace that line and open up a little flap so that we can put our information underneath. And so there we go. And so now I've got a little flap and when I poke it open, I can see inside my little viral window there. And so I've already gone ahead and done that with all my other pictures so that they're all open and I can um, put my information inside. The next thing you're going to do is take the little sheet that has the information on it and hold on, let me go get that. Okay, I'm back. So the sheet that you want to have is this one that has all the little descriptions of what that virus is doing. And you're going to cut that up into a million tiny little squares. No, not a million, just 
just this little bunch right here. What you need to do then is match these guys with the pictures of the viral cycles. And so uh, you're going to read through them and see which one best goes. And so one of the easiest ones to look at is the first um, infection, where that virus has landed on the bacteria and is going to inject its DNA into the bacterium, which is this guy right here. Now this one is eventually going to end up underneath this little flap so that when you go to study it later and you open the window, you get the reminder of what's happening here. Now this is a little tricky, but I figured out a way to make it a bit easier for you to do these. So in your notebook, you're gonna take your page. I just got a blank page right here. You're gonna, you could trim this down so it fits a little bit better, but go ahead and set it on your notebook where you're eventually going to glue it down. Then take a pencil and underneath each flap, just trace a little rectangle or put a great big X as to where that flap is. Try not to let your top sheet slide around too much. So this way, when you are all done, and I've almost got it here, let me just finish these up real quick. They're not real great, but they should uh, help me with my alignment. Um, when you're all done, you're gonna have these rectangles that show you where to glue your little messages. And so there we go. Uh, so now when I move it, you can see I've got the squares that match up with my picture. So as you go and figure out what description best goes with each picture, you could put them onto the corresponding square. And so here the bacteria infects, uh, the bacteriophage infects the DNA would end up going here. And you'll have another one where um, the cell lysis, that's the where the cell's kind of exploding out of there, that's going to go in the square above it. So you can go ahead and glue these guys down where they belong in the picture. And then when you're all done, you put the picture over the top. And now you've got the correct description underneath each photograph. So um, there's information for you guys. I'll post some websites and some book links and stuff like that for you to go so you can get the information for all these. But you do need to know the difference between the lytic cycle and the lysogenic cycle and what's happening at each phase. And so if you have any questions, please come ask.